So tonight, you take me seriously and try it. If you do not want something for yourself, there is some friend you want it for. And without his consent, without his knowledge, don't tell him. You simply assume that he is the man that you like him to be. Or she is the woman you would like her to be. And you persist in that assumption without their knowledge. If it's loving, it doesn't really matter if they know it. Always exercise it lovingly on behalf of another. And if you do it, then you're not using cursing. You're using a blessing. And if you do it lovingly, then you're doing the good thing. And you're doing the lovely thing in this world. And so you avoided that little pitfall because he gave you both. I lay before you this day both good and evil. Life and death. Blessing and cursing. For he said in Deuteronomy again in the 32nd chapter. I, even I, am he. And there is no God beside me. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal, and there is none that can deliver out of my hands. So it's entirely up to me what choice I'm going to make. I can kill, I can make alive, I can wound and I can heal, I can bless and I can curse. But we are told, choose life. So you are the very one that in the very beginning he created for his own glory and gave you himself. He actually became as we are with all the weaknesses and all the limitations of man, that we, in time, may become as he is, fully conscious of the gift that he gave us, mind and speech. And through these gifts we are immortal, creating anything, because now we have the choice of anything, but we know what to choose. But you take it seriously, and this very day, in spite of what the papers will say concerning unemployment, concerning the lack of this, the lack of that, and all the things, ignore it. And see yourself gainfully employed, if that's what you want. And in spite of the freeze, see yourself making more than you've ever made before. Not rubbing someone out, leave them alone. Not rubbing anyone out or displacing anyone. Hear good news for them. And you go from step to step. The man who now sits in the White House, he had no beginning any more than we had. He came from a very poor little family. A grocery store was the background. He failed miserably running for governor of this state. He failed running for the president for the first time. Who would have thought he had one chance of a snowball in hell to sit in the White House? And there he is now. And no one can deny that he is the president of this fabulous country. There he is. And his chances of success, depending upon how he applies this law, are very good if he applies it wisely for a second term. It's entirely up to him if he knows this law. But he must have some knowledge of this law, having failed so miserably in one of 50 states to run for governor, and then to come back and run for the head of 50 states and get it. Well, that's the man. And if he knows this principle and doesn't play too much politics, playing appearances, then you can't stop him. But does he know it? I do not know if he knows it or not. I only know this is the law taught in Scripture. And Scripture teaches it. Whatever you desire, believe you've received it. And you will. And whoever says to this monk can be removed and cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart that what he says will come to pass, it will be done for him. Can you imagine such a fantastic promise? That a man sitting alone, having no background whatsoever, and everything is against him, and he has a talent to become the man he wants to be, by simply using this gift, and he sits down and communes with himself, as we are told in the fourth psalm. Be angry, but sin not. Commune with your own heart upon your beds, and be silent. 